Hey everyone, today I'm going to be shining an infrared flashlight on my face, putting it in my mouth and seeing if I can make infrared light come out of my eyes. Okay, so a while ago I filmed a video with my 32,000 lumen flashlight to see what happens when I shine the light in my mouth to see if I could actually get any light that came out of my eyes. Three, two, one. Oh God. Holy crap, you guys, I just went back and looked at that footage. It actually went up through my eyes. You could see through this eye, you could see the light coming out of it, the red light coming out of my pupil. <laughs> that was crazy. I need to try that again. And amazingly, when I did it, I could only do it for a few seconds because the light is so bright, it absorbs so much heat in my mouth that it gets really hot. So basically, I could shine the light in my mouth and you'd see light come out the bottoms of my eyes here and even out of my pupils a little bit. In order to get light to come out of my eyes, the reason the light had to be so bright, 32,000 lumen, basically a giant spotlight. And the reason it had to be so bright is because our skin absorbs visible light really well. And so in order to get a little bit of light coming through, you need a giant flashlight with a lot of brightness. But what if I used a different type of light that was actually able to penetrate our skin and tissue better than visible light? Well, it turns out that infrared light can penetrate skin and tissue a lot better than visible light. So in order to do this, you can do something similar at home if you have a security camera. So most security cameras can work in the night and the way that they work is they actually have infrared lights around the perimeter of the camera and so they're shining infrared light and they also have an infrared camera. And so basically when the lights go out, it switches over to night mode and it's relying on the fact that it's shining out infrared light and picking up the reflected infrared light and recording it in the infrared camera. But the problem with just having the one camera is that you're shining the infrared light in the same spot where your camera is. But I don't want the light to only be where my camera is. You won't be able to see anything. Basically what I need is I need an infrared camera and an infrared flashlight separate. So how I did this is I took two security cameras. On one security camera, I blocked out all of the infrared light. So this can't emit any infrared light. I have several layers of duct tape. A little bit gets through, but not a lot. And then my other camera is just going to be used as my infrared flashlight. So basically it's just emitting infrared light. So I'll be filming with this one, which isn't emitting any infrared light, but it is recording it. And this one is emitting the light. So this is my flashlight and this is my camera. So here's what it looks like in a dark room. So you can see that it illuminates the room, but to me the room looks completely black. So it's really crazy. It basically looks like I have a giant spotlight on me, but I can't see any light at all, so it doesn't bother me. So the way I can see what's going on here is I'm actually watching my phone and then I'm able to see the image through the infrared camera. So the penetration of this is actually similar to my 32,000 lumen flashlight, even though I can't even see this. It looks like I'm shining a super bright light in my eye, but I can't even see anything, look. Right in my eye, I actually don't see anything. So let's test it out. Let's see if the infrared light can actually just go through my hand. There we go. There's my IR flashlight. You can see I can just put my hand in front of it and you can pretty much see right through my fingers. Even though I put them in front of it, you can see right through them, they're just glowing move my whole fist in front of it. Look what this looks like. Pretty cool. You can actually see my veins and everything. Maybe my bones even. Well, look at that. Look how the light just goes right through. Okay, let's see if we can see it in my eyes. Here we go. Let's 
Whoa, look at it just come out the bottom of my eyes there. You can actually even see it going through my cheeks really easy as well. And because I already have this set up, another interesting thing to check is can you actually focus infrared light with a lens like this? So basically, if you have something warm far away, could you actually use a lens to focus some of the heat on you? Now the longer wavelength infrared light called far infrared light wouldn't be able to transmit through this glass here, but we're using near infrared light. It's shorter wavelength, so it can go through the glass. So let's see if we can focus it. So you can see that you can actually focus it just like you would normal light. Now it's not going to focus in the same spot as visible light. If I were to measure where the focal plane of this near infrared light was, it wouldn't be in the same spot as visible light. That's because the wavelengths are very different than visible light. So in theory, you could actually focus infrared light using a lens, but the problem is you can't focus the far infrared light because it won't go through the glass. And the far infrared light, the longer wavelength of infrared light, is actually the kind that we absorb most. So most of the heat you feel from a fire or something warm is actually far infrared light, not near infrared light. But we still can absorb near infrared light into our skin. It does heat us up, just not as much as far infrared light. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video is out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.